Hello and welcome to my F124 driver career mode here today for round 2 of our F2 career mode as we continue to impress Toto Wolf who hopefully will have a Formula 1 seat for us at the end of this season. He was happy with us after Bahrain despite what happened in the feature race. All we can do is do the same here and try and impress him once again here in Monaco as we start off with the sprint race it wasn't the best of qualifying laps though we are going to be starting in the middle of the top 10 in P6 so we're starting at P5 for the sprint race so let's go to it then what can happen around the streets of Monaco and we are racing here in Monaco we've got a good start we're going to go in between Dewan and the, between those two cars we've gained two places at the first corner it's, ha it's Haja who leads from Korea and now we are all over the back of it's actually for sure if we try and find a way through this is the best opportunity to get up the order we've already taken two can we have a go into the hairpin or are we too far back? We're too far back on this opening lap and that may well be that for Monaco. It seems to feel a lot narrower this this year I think on the game. Yeah, but we're still not giving up, we're still going to push to find a way past for sure. As we go round the casino we are a lot closer here, we have a big wobble though at the casino. We get closer and closer into Mirabeau now. We are very close. We're going to go for a lunge though at the lunge hairpin. Down inside this contact on our side pad to his front left. There's nearly more contact. But the main thing is that we're into P2. It's taken a lot of laps, but we're into P2. It's now though lap 15 we just couldn't find a way to get close to Hadja to have a go and that means we are going to finish the sprint race P2 Hadja gets his first win of the season well what a drive that was to take the win for high tech GP today well, the sprint win's not where the big points are handed out, but it sets them up well for tomorrow and gives a lot of confidence for the longer feature. And as they make their way down to the podium, there's no denying the strength of the high-tech GP team. It was an incredible performance today and they fully deserve to stand on the top step. So that's been the sprint race and how Jar wins we managed to get our way through up to P2 and along with at the fastest lap as well. So don't think that was a bad race you can overtake in Monaco but it's going to be harder in the feature race. We are slightly further back so let's see what happens. It is the Formula 2 race it is time to introduce you to Alex Brundle. I'm Alex Jakes and we've got changeable weather out there today that's making for some nervous team personnel down in the paddock down in the pit lane. Well, uncertainty is what strategy is all about, but it absolves the teams from the responsibility of running both compounds of tyre. They might have to use that wet tyre, of course. And then the question is, where do those crossovers lie between the wet and dry conditions? As the engineers make their last inspection of the cars, let's take a look at today's grid order for the race. A fantastic effort from Arthur Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole position. And it's Oli Behrman in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid we have, Deruvela, Martins, Kushmini, Brown, Dewan, Fittipaldi, for sure, Isaac Hadjar, Stanek, Hauger, Zane Maloney, Teo Porcher, Vesti, Crawford, Awasa, Amory Cordiel, Benavides, Novelak, Correa, and Ralph Boschon completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out. 
So let's get down to the track. So here we go then, the five red lights come on, we're going to need another good start like the sprints. The lights are red right and we're underway and we've got a good start. We're in that slipstream, we're going to point to the outside. And now, um, the river has trapped us off at the first corner, we've had to back out of it, but we're up into P4 from P6. There's two places yet again, just like the sprint gains the first corner now can we find a way past Daruvala and get onto the podium it's Arthur Leclerc who leads at his home Grand Prix can he do what his brother did in real life and win in Monaco now around the hairpin we just can't find a way through we've actually dropped back a little bit on the exit of the hairpin but we're gonna try and set up our classic Monaco dive into the chicane we've gone a bit deep but we're gonna cut him back we're gonna get a great exit off of the chicane and go down the inside it's our classic one well, could move i think he may have touched the wall there Don't blow down. it was very tight in there but we're up into p3 we've gained three places on the opening lap we're gonna skip now onto lap seven as we were all over the back of our fellow brit ollie bearman just couldn't find a way through as now we're going to send it down the inside at Mirabeau catching napping and we're up into P2. We're getting overtakes done in Monaco. You can overtake in Monaco if you're prepared to take the risk. We then very quickly got up to the back of Arthur Leclerc. But he had a very wide car. We could get nowhere near him to have a go. But at the end of lap 10, we come into the pits to make a one and only stop of the day. And let's see us... After the class stays out, can we do the undercut on him? Can we do the overtake for the lead in the stops as the softs go on? And we're held up, we're held up slightly by a car there that may come back to bite us as we come out of the pits. We're gonna have to have a stunning outlap whilst we also warm up the tyres. No tyre blankets in Formula 2, of course. So let's see what we can do on this outlap then as we climb the hill. Lap 11, towards the end of the lap, into the pits, it comes half of the clerk. They're all doing this, everyone's sort of doing the same strategy. Super soft to the soft, and now where are we relative to half of the clerk? As he comes out of the pits, let's look down, we're nowhere to be seen. We're absolutely nowhere. There we are. We're, he's going to go ahead at through town one. Arthur Leclerc, we haven't made the undercut work, and it's so close. That car well, that we have to that we had to wait for has cost us there. Because if that doesn't happen, we're in the lead of the Grand Prix right now. As Leclerc has to heat up his tyres, this is a golden opportunity for us before we get the tyres up temperature for us to find a way through but we can't this Monaco is so narrow we're trying but on to lap 14 now we're gonna go for it down the inside we're too far back the glare chops us off we're, we're just trying to find anything now because he's so slow we've got great pace in Monaco we've always gone well in Monaco in career modes but this time we are a lot closer to Leclerc as we go through in the tunnel. We can see us in the background. We're going to get closer. We're going to lick the stamp and send it and go for a big lunge at the Nouveau Chicane. And we take the lead of the feature race in Formula 2. The most unpopular overtake as we deny Arthur Leclerc a shot at a home Grand Prix win as we hit the barrier and be around the final couple of corners we are going to pick up our first win in Formula 2 we've pulled away from Leclerc we win the Monaco French run yes 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 guys yes come on boys well what a drive it was to take the win for PHM by Charouz today They've clawed their way up the field there, and the fans love to see it. It's absolutely no surprise they've managed to win the race with that level of overtaking.
Welcome then to the podium, our top three drivers. What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. So we get our first win of the career mode and I think Toto Wolff's got to be happy with us after that performance. Winning in Monaco and getting it done on the track. We had to work for it, we had to wait to get past Arthur Leclerc but we did it in the end. We very nearly got him in the stops. The most important thing is we have won, it's our first win of the season. It's double podium for it as well after the sprint race. Down at the back it was Correa who was last our teammate. All the way down there he has not had a good weekend. In terms of comparing to us we've got two podiums one of them being a win so him finishing way outside of the points isn't really good on his part in terms of the drivers championship now we have taken over the lead of Enzo Fittipaldi after the sprint and feature race 17 points is the gap now back to Enzo Fittipaldi didn't really turn up this weekend did Fittipaldi and you can see our teammate has dropped quite a bit after Leclerc coming up a lot as well down at the back there's still a lot of drivers still yet to score but we've only had four races the constructors we continue to lead and we've actually extended our lead out a little bit the gap now 16 points back to carlin so that's been the monaco grand prix weekend for formula 2 we get our first win of the career modes toto wolf was pleased with how our first race went in bahrain but he said we did need to improve with the after the tires so i think he's got to be happy after today but we'll go and have our meeting with him we go next to austria i'll see you then goodbye